Welcome back, another episode. Several characters in the Chicago Fire episode The Wrong Guy Look Out of Place, which makes sense given how haphazard and unsatisfactory the entire show is. While it's not a bad episode, it's just there, serving no real purpose and adding nothing to the overall season 12 experience. Given that there aren't many moments in the hour that will be remembered past the end credits, labeling it a filler episode would even be stretching the truth a little. While Stella Kid worries about her girls on fire training program, Joe Cruz is surprised to see someone from his adopted son Javi's past return. Violet Mikami is fighting to keep her new partner, and Christopher Herrmann is battling cell phone technology. Kelly Severide is stepping in as acting supervisor in this situation. To the episode's detriment, there's a lot to keep track of even with two key cast members absent. The main plot of Chicago Fire Season 12, Episode 10, centers on the arrival of Jack Damon, a new recurring character played by Michael Bradway. Bradway steps in to fill the void left by Rome Flynn's departure as Derek Gibson, who joined the program following the departure of Alberto Rosend as Blake Gallo. Given that Jack Damon inevitably has a hidden agenda, it appears that he will be just another fleeting character. When Darren Ritter intercepts Damon talking to an unknown person on the phone toward the end of the episode, he tells them that nobody here knows. The portrayal of a purported ally as a villain has happened before. Whatever you may think of the late paramedic Jared Lennox, at least he was upfront about his annoyance status. However, there are also characters that people are familiar with, like Jack Damon, Emma Jacobs, and Hope Jackanot. It does seem like a heel turn at first, Jack warms up to Stella and gives her a TV appearance to help preserve girls on fire, but Severide later tells Stella that he doesn't recall teaching Jack at the academy. Why, then, would Jack tell a lie? Moreover, what would have been so bad if he had simply been a Firehouse 51 fan who eventually got a job there? That wouldn't have been out of order given all the newsworthy events that occur at 51. In fact, it would have been more intriguing than having another problematic child so soon after the Lennox plot. Though Jack is currently a new character traveling down a familiar path, Firehouse 51 will eventually need to start growing more wary of the people they bring in. Hopefully, Jack will prove all of this incorrect. Joe Cruz's adopted son Javi is the subject of the wrong guy's second plot line. When Cruz finds out that Javi's uncle Dennis is in Chicago and wants to get in touch with Javi again, he is nervous because he thinks the other man would try to challenge the adoption. Maybe he still recalls all the drama Gabriella Dawson, played by Monica Raymond, had with Louis. As one of the supporting cast members, he doesn't often get a major tale, and when he does, it's usually a humorous one, like the one about Slamigan in Chicago Fire Season 12, Episode 5, On the Hook. Minoso is amazing when he nails those dramatic plotlines, and the wrong guy is no exception. But aside from proving that Cruz is an excellent father, what purpose does this storyline serve? He has a headache, Javi is going through heartache, and that's it. The same is true of the scene with Violet and Novik, in which Violet finds out that Novik would prefer to work at other firehouses with her friends rather than as her new partner. Violet's attempt to warm up to Novik seems desperate, especially after she tells Stella that Novik has some skills, and she's not a shill for Chief Robinson in order to justify her desire to work as a partner. When Christopher Herrmann's daughter Annabelle receives a new phone at the beginning of the episode, he unintentionally finds out that he can follow his kids about using their phones. After Ritter reluctantly demonstrates how to accomplish it, Herrmann naturally overuses his newfound skill and falls into trouble. Ritter's observation regarding technology getting into the wrong hands is a great way to summarize the plot. But the reason it works so well is that Eigenberg and Kyrie perform it flawlessly. Although the wrong guy is aware of Bowden and Mouch's absences, their presence would have only served to accentuate an already overly crowded and disorganized episode. It would have been beneficial to have fewer, more focused narratives, maybe then some of the storylines may have been explored deeper and found to have more to offer. For more videos, subscribe.